going live. So now we are <laughs> live and we're so happy to be live. Uh, again, uh, chat's on. I, I just kind of shared really quickly how this has evolved and has grown and it's doing it by the day. And we've had some excellent co-hosts, especially this week, Trevor on Saturday, Sarah yesterday. And I want to introduce uh, Gretchen Skelko, who's a regular and really was here from the beginning and uh, has been so essential in the formative stages of building this thing. So Gretchen, love to hear what your thoughts are. Yeah, I actually, you know, it's interesting because this is one of the things with live is that you you hope that the technology is there to back you up and is working. Um, but yeah, no, I think that this is, um, again, with live and live conversations, it's such a great gift that I think the this platform and others offer people because it's another way to stay, you know, in touch with each other, but also learn from each other and get that, you know, real time benefit of have, you know, understanding what, what the other person is going through and seeing if you can help them. I'm looking at you thinking that this is still a problem on the live. Uh, yeah. Have you seen, why don't you, um, gosh. Yeah, yeah, I am not. Let me see if I'm seeing it. I mean, I think it's okay to to talk about it while we're looking to see, because I think uh -huh. this probably happens to a lot of people. Um, when they're nope, I see it on Facebook. So yeah. it is there on Facebook, but and it's not, it's not streaming on LinkedIn. That's okay, because it's still streaming. So I'm not sure what's going on with LinkedIn. If is your LinkedIn linked? in your your channels yeah so what i may do is why don't you keep talking and i'll keep fixing and okay. that way anybody who's listening you know uh can continue to uh learn as we go sounds good sounds good yeah so i was just mentioning that you know when it comes to live events like this one and i i do think that it's so important to uh, oh and it is live on youtube as well so that's also very good so this is another example of the power of these live events. So, mm -hmm. and, and also some of the challenges that people will have. So when you go live, you know, we're using Restream, which is what I use for the new one that I started courtesy of you and Trevor and a few other people who gave me the confidence to do it. But that, you know, with these platforms, you can stream to your other platforms and that's great. You're still a little dependent, obviously on the technology and hoping that it works. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So for everybody who's watching this on Facebook or YouTube or any of the other channels that you might have linked up, that's great. For the LinkedIn audience, that might be a little bit of a challenge. So how do you get around that? Well, obviously there's a recording of this and so they can see it after the fact. You can post it to your profile and that's great too because at the end of the day, the benefit is really going to be the conversation that you have. So what are we bringing forth in each other? Now, obviously, you know, the back and forth banter between host and co-host is really important, but so is what the audience is getting from it. So I don't, you know, obviously know if anybody on my YouTube or my Facebook, uh, you could comment and then it will come through here. Um, LinkedIn is usually, that's where the biggest one, I know, Don, you have a huge audience and following on LinkedIn. So I know that can be a challenge as well. Um, especially right now when I know there are people who have messaged saying, Hey, we want to get in and see the live and we're not sure where it is. So I know they're, they're working on it. I'm actually going to, while I'm talking, I'm going to put a message out. It's live everywhere, but LinkedIn. Odd. So um, I'm just letting people know that, you know, the restrict, you know, whatever is happening, it is a challenge. But of course, it is something that, you know, you can get through. So just to go back a little bit to the purpose of today's talk while you're looking through how that looks and, and that why the LinkedIn link may not be working. Um, well, actually, let me while we're doing that, let me check my profile and see if it's showing on mine. Um, and it's not. So we do know that LinkedIn is the challenge. Um, so that is something uh, maybe to look into. I'm not sure why. I know that LinkedIn has had <clears throat> some some growing pains recently. They've released so many new features and so much has gone on that I don't know if, if a lot of people have noticed this where maybe their notifications stopped or they can't respond mm -hmm. or comment on a post and things like that. 
And I think a lot of that happens when you get a platform that is so popular right now can get a little saturated in terms of activity. I know that that happened over the weekend. I was reading with chat GPT, which everybody loves now, and it was at capacity. Nobody could use it. That happens too. So anybody who's going to watch this on the replay on LinkedIn, understand there was nothing that you did, nothing that, that mm -hmm. Don did, nothing that anybody did. This is part of being in the age of technology where everything we do pretty much is dependent on some form of technology. And I think that's okay. That alone is a huge discussion point. So we're talking about, you know, your, your theme today, initiate, motivate, applicate, and celebrate. All of those things are fine. I can still celebrate that we still have a lot to talk about. And I think that anybody who watches the replay of this will get a lot from it. Um, you know, again, you're the host, so it'll be up to you to decide how long you want to talk. You know, the audience participation part of a live is critical. Like that's so important. So I'm actually going to do a quick test while we're while we're here. Well, you know, I noticed I uh, I uh, disconnected LinkedIn and reinstalled it. Mm -hmm. And when I reinstalled it, uh, my YouTube uh, says streaming in yep. green underneath it my it <laughs> linkedin sending data yep and so i just i just commented on my youtube hi everyone and that came through now let me go to facebook and see if i can also comment on my facebook and say hi everyone and see if that comes through and so yep so that lets you know you are streaming it is fine you know, but LinkedIn is having a challenge. So this isn't a restream issue and it's not, uh, you know, a live issue. Mm -hmm. It's a LinkedIn issue right now. And that's not to disparage the platform. Anybody who's used LinkedIn in the last, you know, certainly six months knows that there are some challenges that the platform is having. And so, you know, for this one, I'm happy if you want to come back and have this talk again, or if you want to just keep talking. I know that the, that Facebook and YouTube are fine. I don't know what other channels you or platforms you might be streaming well, I'm just to. doing uh, YouTube and LinkedIn. And, okay. And I think, you know, and that's the fascinating thing about LinkedIn Live is that you really end up only talking about what you're experiencing at the time. Now, exactly. if, if it's audience interaction, that takes over center stage. And, you know, the upside is that it's spontaneous and real, the challenge is everything has to work right for it to support something like that. But I think the lesson to be learned mm -hmm. uh, is you can only control what you can control. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is exactly right. Um, and I think that's really important because for anybody who might be watching this on the replay, you can only control what you can control and you can't get upset about things. I know you can. I mean, people do, mm -hmm. but you really it's not in your best interest. It's not in anybody's best interest to be upset and chained to a reaction of something that is completely out of your control. This right now is out of anybody's control. So the LinkedIn audience, which would be the biggest part of the audience for your broadcast, can't see it live. They can see it on the replay, but they can't see it live. If this happens to you in real life, just let's take a situation where you know, something happens that you can't control. You're on the way to an appointment. You get stuck in traffic. You can't control that. Mm -hmm. What One thing that people do, and I'll tell you a fun, well, not fun, but an interesting story about something like that in a second. But, you know, one thing people do is immediately, like that anxiety kicks in. They're thinking about all this cascade of what ifs. What if I don't get there in time? What if they cancel my appointment, my interview, my whatever? Like, what if my boss is mad at me if I'm going in the out? Whatever it is. Those things, none of those things have happened yet. They may never happen, but our brains go right there. And so that's a great opportunity to do some, like, just, I call it diffusing your inner bomb, like just deep breaths, one, two, three, take two, three deep breaths. You know, I, I there's a, um, uh, my body coach, Julia Bogdanova, and she does a breathing exercise that she takes us through, which is fantastically helpful for recentering yourself. And then really think about what you can do, you know, and in those moments when you're not thinking about the what ifs, you can strategize. You can think about the what ifs when you're so much in it. You're not thinking that, oh, there's an exit I could get like really quick. If we're just moving at 20 miles an hour, I'll get there and I can just take an alternate route. Or 
I got a cell phone. I can just call people and let them know. But when you're so aggravated, you're honking the horn, you're gesturing, you're so upset, you're not thinking about the strategic ways that you can alleviate and help yourself out of the situation. You know, I've written about it, but years ago, I was on my way to work and there's a very popular Dunkin' Donuts. Well, this is where we used to live. But there's a very popular Dunkin' Donuts that was in on my route. And I thought, you know what? I'm a little early. I'm going to get myself a nice coffee. I'm going to do it. So I got in and there's a line. There's a long line at this Dunkin' Donuts. It goes all the way out to the street. You can see it. You know it's happening. If you've passed that Dunkin' Donuts, you know that's a thing with them. So you make a choice to get in that line. It didn't just happen and you found yourself, you know, in a long line. You chose to get there. So I was in the line and I'm listening to an audiobook. It's no big deal for me. And then I'm switching back and forth between the audiobook and the radio because I'm curious what's going on. And then I get up to the window and I make my order. No biggie. But while I'm watching, you know, I'm flipping around the radio, I'm seeing this guy behind me. And he is just animated and not in a good way. He is so pissed off, Don. He's and he's honking his horn. He's doing things like gesturing at me and all this stuff. I'm like, whoa, dude, I'm just here in the line in front of you. I'm not doing anything to you. I'm not preventing you from doing anything. Like, let's chill. But what really caught my eye was it, I mean, it was him, but it was, there was a kid next to him. There's a little boy in the car with him. And so my brain immediately, I, I see this visual of a child a wash in negative negativity. He's in that car and all he's hearing and all he's seeing is whoever parent, whatever he was radiating this anger and negativity. And that stays with you. Right. Mm -hmm. So I did the thing where they say, you know, pay it forward. So I paid for their breakfast, whatever they ordered. You know, the lady told me, I said, how much was theirs? And so I paid for theirs and then off I went and I have no idea how it affected him, but my whole point of that was I wanted to do something nice for him to sort of take him out of that moment and at least make something that he was perceiving as a horrible thing, not so horrible. And just off my day, off on my day, I went, but all I could think really think about was if you don't do that, and if you're not able to get yourself out of that mindset, you take that with you to work, to your coworkers, to school, to your teachers, to your friends, and then you take it back home. That thing that happened eight, nine, ten hours earlier that was minor. You take that and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger in a bad way until some people just look, they explode. They can't handle it. You know, it's really important to be able to get yourself out of those situations and realize it's not that big a deal. I mean, to me, it's like, OK, if you choose to get in the line at a very popular, you know, drive through place. And your biggest problem is waiting in line so that somebody can hand you your pre-prepared food or drink through a window. You don't really have, I mean, if that's your biggest problem in the day or if that's what sets you off, you really need to check your priorities. You don't have problems. You don't. If that's your problem, you have no problems. And I'm not preaching. I'm just letting you know. I'm saying this from a person who's... <laughs> Had our house blow up, had, you know, I have MS, I, you know, have all these things that I've been attacked by a dog, like all these things have happened. I've gone through layup, you know, there are bad things that happen. We need to really keep things in perspective. And in the moment, in the moment when things are happening, that is the most important time to know how to do it. And yay, somebody says, so, so let's made it. Woo, we have somebody made yeah, it from you. Yeah, we got a real person. Yay. Yeah, you know, I think that's so <laughs> great the way you laid that out because, Hi, Mike. I was even thinking um, this morning that when kids, by the time a child gets to five years old, they've heard 20,000 no's and 5,000 yeses. Yeah. And all you got to do is start turning no's into yeses, you know, like, you know, don't touch the stove goes to thank you for, for not touching the stove. Right. Or Same I'm, or I'm, I'm so happy you're being safe. I'm so happy, you know, you're making good choices. Like all the, hi, it's so great to see you, Mike. I'm so glad somebody, I put a message yeah, on your Mike. LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mike's actually going to be hosting. Uh, I, I think know. Today, so that's exciting. It is. You know, and that's the beauty of this, you know, what I learned and I keep saying that it's not how many times you fall, it's how fast you get up. And even today, with this technical thing. My only concern is, will it happen tomorrow? 
you know, but I never know. But here's the thing. Eventually, everything that comes to you is a surprise. And then you're shocked. And then you're kind of taken off course for a little while. You know, it's like something hits you and knocks you a little bit, but doesn't make, bowl you over. Yeah. And then you come back to it and say, how do we fix it? You know, how, how, do, how do we move from this and how do we enjoy it? You know, and, and some of the greatest celebrations are, come from some of the most embarrassing situations. Yeah. Right. You find yourself into something and you, and you just it's so unbelievable. It gets funny. Right. It's, yeah. And we've all had those those things that have happened. I mean, when you said that embarrassing situations, I was just remembering one when I was in college, you know, we our final, you know, I, I went to Auburn and there's this, if you're familiar with Alabama and the red clay mud in Alabama, it's a thing and it stains everything it touches. You can't get it out. Well, you know, I, this was, I was running to my exam and there was a hill that I had to go. You can see where I'm going with this. I lost my mm -hmm. footing and I slid butt first all the way down that hill. I have to go take my test. I'm old enough to, to let you know, this was before online. This was back when you had to show up and take the test. You could not do it online. There were no cell phones back at this. I would like, seriously. Mm -hmm. So you had to go. So my whole backside is full of red mud. I don't have time to go back and change. I have to go. Mm -hmm. And so I went, I was so embarrassed and I went, I had to like clear my head. It was really hard and take that test. And I've always celebrated the fact that I did that because that was, I was completely embarrassed. I mean, I had to walk the rest of the way to my building and Auburn's a big campus. And, you know, knowing that, you know, I might be walking toward you and look okay, but as soon as I pass it, you're going to be like, oh my, <laughs> so, mm -hmm. girlfriend had a fall, but I did it and I got through it. And I'll, yeah, yes, Mike read, it, it was not fun, but you know, it, it happened. Things are going to happen and how you react to it and what you get from it is everything. And the ability to find humor in really hard moments you know, it doesn't mean the moments are humorous. It means finding humor in the dark or challenging moments because they're there and we learn from them. And that vulnerability is really important because it's part of being human. And so I, I love the celebrate part because like we were talking before uh, the first attempt at the show, you know, people, I, I really feel like people wait until the big goal is gotten before they mm -hmm. celebrate, not realizing that celebrating all the steps along the way is important because you don't get to the goal without all those steps. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mike, those are the moments that change us. Absolutely. I love that comment. You know, they absolutely do change us and we remember them. You know, those experiences, those, you know, those embarrassing or hard fought or any of those experiences stay with us. So they do change us and they help make they help us become what it is that we're going to become ultimately. And I think that's really important. So, yeah, that celebration of things all along the way, you got to do it. And even if it feels like, well, I haven't gotten there yet, you're getting there. And like mm -hmm. I said on the last live you know, it's, it's that confidence muscle, you know, we're building that confidence muscle that, you know, I did, I did it. I did it. I did it. You know, I can do it. I can, I will, I am all those things. We're building that all along the way. And that is, it's, it's critical. You got to celebrate all those moments. Yep. Well, you know, I met a gentleman who again, uh, reached pretty successful, uh, levels in his career. And I always want to know people's story, you know, mm -hmm. like where'd you start and what'd you do and how'd you get there? And he said, well, I'll tell you, it just came from switching uh, one word into another word. And I said, okay, well, tell me a little bit more. So he says, well, you know, I was the kind of guy that if you come in front of me, I'd get road rage. I chase you. I don't know what I do. I always wanted to be like a detective on one of those TV shows, you know, yeah. like, you know, and uh, <laughs> he said everybody around me, you know, just had a hard time because I would just overreact, you know, I, things would trigger me in so many ways. But he said, you know, one time I was at a mall waiting for my family to, to, to get back from shopping and I was anxious and impatient and 
everything else. And I saw somebody and it upset me even more. But it occurred to me that if I just switched the word frustration with fascination, everything seemed to be in a better perspective. So instead of getting angry, I was like, how could someone do something? That's fascinating. You know, let me think on that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's what we talked about a few weeks ago is mindset. And that's yeah. the key to our topic is, is really to motivate so people can apply it. Yeah. You know? Oh, Cindy's here. I don't know how this is working, but I, I went ahead, Don, on your on your profile, on your uh, post about this one. I put uh, YouTube and Facebook links. So if anybody wants to join, mm -hmm. so hopefully that will be helpful for them. So, yeah, because it, it's tough. But I think it goes to what you're saying. Resiliency, man. I mean, you know, when you're you know getting motivated about something, you know, when you're motivated to share and really help like we were saying, build that community and talk to people, you'll figure out a way to do it. Okay. LinkedIn's not going it, to, it's, it's given, it's having a little tantrum today. No biggie. There are other platforms that can help support this live with that. That's just what every, I mean, power in numbers, right? There's, there's three streaming platforms that, that I have right now for this. So if one is a little wonky, the other two are there to help support it. Mm -hmm. Power in numbers. You know, it, for, for Mike and Cindy who are here, who've made it, that's great. They can offer support for each other, just like that show that we did a couple of weeks ago where the whole audience was helping each other through a couple of things. Remember, we had the three people who were writing, one who was a children's book author, two who wanted to write a children's book. They're helping each other in the, in the chat. Like all that power in numbers, that community. Community you know, everybody wants to talk about the trends to watch in 2023. And that's great. I shouldn't do it that way. But I think it's funny because there are like a thousand different videos out there. But community is one that's every single year. And I think it's going to be really big and important this year because people are hungry for it. The more we see activity like we saw last week with mass layoffs by gigantic companies and people feel like I'm, I am just a number. I'm not tell members to search. Oh my goodness. But uh, yeah. Can you put uh, Mike's comment up? Cause I can't say that it's the, the, the most recent one. There you go. If you want to leave that up, that might be helpful. Yeah, <laughs> Thank no, you, Mike. Great. And you know what I'm learning from this and I'm trying to learn as fast as real time will let me is yesterday was a wonderful LinkedIn live and it really expressed a lot of sincere, uh, honest feelings from a lot of people to a lot of people. Yeah. And then you got to ask yourself, what does this make you feel and why? Whatever it is. Yeah. And I look at it as like, well, I do this every day for eight months. So if this was like once a year or once a month, it'd be like really frustrating. But I know I'm going to keep doing them and I spend have all the opportunity to talk. Yeah. But I feel like when you build momentum and it's almost like, people are waiting to eat and you can't serve them. You know, yeah. you, you promote it. You know, that's my frustration and disappointment is not with Restream or LinkedIn. I, I'm so aware of technology challenges that they don't surprise me. But what they do is they break up some of the momentum. And the more other part is the mystery some people have that they don't see it after you promote it yeah you know? yeah. so you know it's like how do you unring a bell and you're trying to build character and integrity and thoughtfulness uh but i guess what it also demonstrates is a preview of what's to come for everybody who ends up putting their toe in this water and maybe our uh, surprise won't be as much of a surprise to you knowing that it exists out there uh, and it really makes for another great show you know it does it does you know so you're working with real situations in real time with real people uh, oh cindy shared it on on uh, linkedin great you Yay. know and that's you know that's what happens when you're on a road trip and you get a flat tire right and you find yeah. out you don't got a jack uh, so <laughs> <laughs> you got to be resourceful. Uh, uh, I added, okay, got that. We're going to keep that on. Nice job, Cindy. Thanks. Um, you know, and, and actually some of the programs where it's a little more intimate, less people, 
uh, can be more meaningful. Mm -hmm. And I think what the common thread through so many of these LinkedIn lives is an attitude of gratitude. Yes. Right? So if you focus on what's wrong instead of what's right, and we'll continue to get better over time, you know, that makes a difference. And, you know, it, it's just being with people. I think, you know, what I love about LinkedIn Live is I get to see the people, get to hear the people, get to feel the people where, yeah. you know, doing a post is like the Pony Express, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, you, you gotta you, warn me. <laughs> I tried to get it before you took the first sip. Uh, so, so, uh, you know, because so you're dropping, you know, it's like a, a pony taking something, dropping it off, someone eventually looking at it, responding because they're between things. So they want to be as personalized, but as fast as they can uh, versus it's okay. I mean, I think that's the first thing to launching initiate. And that's really what we're going to go over is be proactive. The People who go first do the best, motivate people so they're bringing a positive mindset and, and they're excited yeah. and make sure they apply uh, what they've learned. And then the other thing we talked about in one of these LinkedIn Lives today that probably no one saw was celebrate little things yeah. uh, and be your own best friend. Yes. You know, yeah. Be an advocate for yourself. Yeah, nobody in the world is going to treat you better than you treat yourself. Even if you think they are, they're not because people take their cues from you. It's one of the things like, you know, that I've said before about people in leadership positions, but it's really true of everybody. When you're in a leadership position, everybody's watching you anyway. And they're taking their cues about what's acceptable and appropriate and all that from you, which is why when you're in a, in a leadership position anywhere, you know, you need to be very conscious of, of how you how you are, how you are showing up. But everybody in your life takes their cues about how to treat you by how you treat yourself. You're telling them. You telegraph how you expect to be treated, good or bad. we got to own it, but you do. And it's one of the other reasons why I think the power of community is so important because th that is an area where even if you're not aware you know, there are times where I've been like, no, I've, I've got it going on. I'm treating myself great. Like I am important. I know what I'm doing. I'm making myself a priority. And I've had one or two people from my own community go, are you, you sure about that? Cause mm -hmm. I don't think you are, you know? And I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm fine. A very famous, you know, time, not famous, but famous for me was in 2014. 2014 was a terrible year. There were things that happened that year in my family that we've still not really fully recovered from. But I was, you know, I was spinning all the plates. I was juggling all the balls. I had all, you know, I was doing my work. I had my team. I was, you know, leading my department. I had my family. I had all the stuff I was doing. And finally, it was it was some two people that I work with who were like, you're not okay. I'm like, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. You're not okay. And it's okay to say you're not okay. So, that the power of community, they can they can hold up a mirror in times when you may not even realize you're not able to do it. So, you know, lock arms with each other. Go forward together. I think that's the best way. Oh, Mike wants to know what was the biggest highlight from the live last week. You, Mike, do you mean the one that I did with Don or just in general? Because he does one every day. So, <laughs> uh, well, you know, my my greatest highlight um, kind of was something to continue to grow through the week, which was interaction, uh, participation among the people. And I was mentioning to Sarah, it's almost like now we're developing a three ring circus where, you know, the, the, the co myself and the co-host are, let's say in the main ring, but then people go off and, and, and create their own rings right where now there's two or three people involved like the the ladies with the with the, the children's books yeah uh, sarah definitely lit a fire yesterday with yeah. her story and and you know i think the goal when you you want to be on the show or a co-host is empowerment you know empowering people to do a little bit more in a 
in different areas maybe they're not accustomed to. Some people are ready to take the big leap. Some people are just looking to take a, a preview of what it is. You know, and everybody has their uncomfortable comfort level. Yeah. Right? And and, and they're, they're afraid. You know, that's really what I tell people. You know, they found out that one of the biggest fears in America on Sunday night is a person has to go to the job they hate, yeah. work for people they that don't respect them and they don't like. Yeah. And the biggest fear is they'll get fired. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, it's amazing. It's, it's called the Sunday scaries and they're a very real thing. And think about what you just said. People get so anxiety ridden on Sundays because they know on the horizon is going to a job they don't like working for somebody that they don't feel valued by or recognized by. And yet their biggest fear is losing that job, being separated from that. Ugh, right. Those two things are in direct opposition to each other. That's part of the reason because you feel chained to that experience. Like I need this. I have to have it to pay my bills, to do whatever it is, mm -hmm. but you, but you don't, you know, it's a, it, it can be very freeing there again. There, there are bad things that happen. And again, last week when we had a mass, a wave of layoffs, but again, you have to take it as an individual thing and work through that individually. The collective mindset, you know, we're talking about the power of community and community is very important, but your community, the hive mind can be, can be good or bad. And when we get caught up in this groundswell of everything's terrible, you know, Jobs are scarce, all these kind of things. They're not. The economy actually is pretty strong right now, and the job market is is not. I mean, jobs are being added all the time. That a couple of companies, you know, chose to do these waves. That's one thing, but there are a million others. And April Little had a post today where she was talking about. I wonder how many new startups are going to be formed by people who you know have been displaced through job loss. That's huge. You know, you think about what that could look like. People who are the brains behind some of the products we love at Google or Microsoft or any of these other ones, they could start their own company. They could start their own technology company offering a product that is a direct competitor to something that they did there. I mean, you think about the possibilities and that's energizing. So it's really important to think about, you know, where you're, how you're taking the control that you have over what mm -hmm. you do with the information that's, that's put before you or the events that unfold in your life. And I see, yeah, the Sunday blues. Yeah. Again, Cindy, you're right, because it's, it's very important to understand it's a real thing. It does happen. It affects a lot of people, but there are things that you can do that can help you get through those. So for example, if you're really dreading that, put something on your calendar that's having lunch or just calling somebody that you love, that you get energized talking to. If it's a friend who always buoys you up or something else, have it on your calendar just so you know there's something to look forward to. That's actually, strategically speaking, very effective. You know, little your mood can change on a dime. We all know that, like our brains automatically go, oh yeah, I can get pissed off or blah, blah, blah on a dime, but you can get happy on a dime. You literally can. Conjure some memories. Again, I've talked about this where, you know, it's it's part of thought switching, right? So I have a thought that whenever I get like my whole face, I can't like those moments where you're just like that emoji with the brain coming off, like you're just you're just that upset. When I get like that, I go to there's a thought that I have when I was younger. I used to love to ride horses. I grew up in the middle of nowhere, Alabama. I used to ride horses with uh, my friend Amanda Howard. And we would ride and we'd go over to Amanda's house. And no matter what time of year it was or what time of day it was or what day of the week it was, her house always smelled like somebody just cooked bacon. And it cracks me up just thinking about it. I have no idea why it always smelled like that. But it always did, whether anybody was home or not. It's You open that front door and it's just like bacon. And it cracks me up to this day. So when I'm really upset, I think about horseback riding with Amanda and bacon and it, and it levels my mood. It just on a dime, it turns that corner for me. And now I'm able to kind of reframe and look at the, look at the issue, whatever's going on again. And I find that to be very helpful. A lot of people have those, you know, I guess some people call it the happy place, your happy place. Go there. It, it's a, it's a technique. It's not just a, 
you know, a nice plaque that you see on somebody's wall or something. It's a strategy. It's a technique that you can use any single time you want. It's free. It's in your brain. Only you have it. It's special to you. That's why you're unique. Go there. Go to your happy place. It, it exists for a reason and it will transport your mood and put you in a frame of mind where you can now begin to problem solve for whatever the event was that caused you to need to go there in the first place. Like that's a legit technique that anybody can use and it works. Yeah. And you know, what I always do is I start walking, you yeah. know, and, and eventually it disappears. I mean, you might have to walk two miles, you know, and, and the reason you're walking is because to me, if you're sitting, you're stewing, you know, yeah. you're just sitting there all huddled up in a chair, looking at a screen with people and, and office equipment or walls. And once you get out and you start walking, you can't help but start <clears throat> hearing the birds, seeing the trees, looking at, the, at what's going on outside. And then eventually after 10 or 15 minutes, you start wearing off. In other yeah. words, it's better to, to, to get rid of the steam through walking than through stewing. Physical you know? activity is so important. Like Mike was just saying, he likes hiking. You know, Cindy's talking about, you know, yeah, you can't stay in a bad mood if you intentionally smile. That's a physical response. That's absolutely. Those things are really important. Hiking. Yeah, I love hiking too. Well, you know, the other thing is, I think to what you're saying, Gretchen, is it's okay to trick yourself once in a while. But you it's know? not tricking because you after, know, I mean. But, but, you know, what I learned is my wife's a, been an, a yoga instructor for like 35 years and she's got her own yeah. Zoom station and, and stuff like that. She does, you know, uh, wow. so well. And early, like years ago, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, uh, laughter yoga came out. Yeah. And, and it was so interesting. And people would meet like in City Park and like 100 people would show up. And you would do, somebody would do something that was so ridiculous and funny and everybody would then intentionally laugh as hard as they could and, and practice doing that. And eventually that created a co contagion of laughter. And what yeah. they proved is whether you were laughing at something that was naturally funny or something you made yourself laugh, the same impact happened to, you know, areas of your body that made you calmer. Yeah. So that's what I mean by trick is not to be false to yourself, but maybe find things funnier than they are. Maybe, yeah. maybe find serious things less serious than they are. You know, and I always come back to, hey, this isn't blood and guts, right? Whatever it is, no, no one's getting hurt. Uh, everybody's who they are. And I think every time you think you got it, something comes and humbles you. Yeah. It's, you know, everything you got control or you're a master of it. And hey, it's now it's working for you. Something like a technical glitch, something like something you couldn't control. And you know what you should do is never be surprised by it. But what, yeah. what, why it took so long. I had such a great streak going. You <laughs> know? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Cindy was asking uh, if your wife does yoga for older adults, um, which, you know, I think that's, I think yoga is really cool. It's something that I've, I've tried and I'm horrible at it, but I still try, um, you know, but I was, you know, when you were talking about laughter yoga, I think laughter is contagious. And I think that that's a very good thing, you know, but I think it, anything that kind of transports your mind, you know, can help you get into a healthier space because again, quieting your mind is one of the hardest things to do. But when you can do that, you can really be present. And when you're present, you can solve, you can figure things out, right? you have ideas, you're more creative. Like it just, again, it activates that whole prefrontal cortex of the brain where all the good stuff happens. Right. And then you can just go from there. You know, I, you know, I, you were talking about when things happen and I was remember, like you can be riding the wave of everything's good and then er, something's going to happen and it can be small or it can be big, you know, for, I, I've mentioned this one before, but 2018 was, you know, I had gotten promoted that year. You know, I took a trip like with um, my husband and son. we took a trip to uh, Prague, Vienna and Budapest. Like that year was going great. You know, that was in June. We took the trip in May. I got promoted like 2018 was going to be my turnaround year after 
three years of consistent real tragedy and, and very much hardship in my family. 2018 was my year and it was going great. And then September 12th, my house blew up. A high transmission power line fell on the chain link fence in the backyard. Everybody was like, we've never seen this happen. The police department, the fire department, everybody was like, we've never seen this happen. The utility company, you know, and it electrified the fence and it sent the current from the fence to the aluminum, you know, the, the screen enclosure in the back porch up the gutters through the house. And boom, that was it. So, okay. You can't see that happening. You can't prepare for something like that. So you could be riding that good wave. Everything's going great. You're just, I mean, it was a great year until that happened. And then it's, how do you deal with that? And you create, you know, you, you begin to, there are a lot of problems, a lot of problems you got to solve, but you get, you do it and you figure them out little by little. And that's what I did. And, you know, that was a, you know, that was a lot every day. You have to strategize and how you're going to do it. And like I was saying before, Tell yourself, you know, the thought switching, you can lie to your, and I did early on. I was like, things are going to be okay. I, I, I've, I've got this. We're going to get through this. You know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to get this done. And I was lying when I first said it. And I've said this to people before, tell yourself the good thing, even if you don't believe it, because even if you don't believe it, keep telling yourself that because you will eventually, because you'll start to see little signs that it's working. And to your point about the theme of this show, celebrate those, you know, when you decide that, you know, you've found a place to live that is furnished that you can afford while you're paying mortgage on a house you can't live in, you know, while you're, you know, having to hire a lawyer while you're doing all these things, money, 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 but you find a place you can afford that's furnished because you need that because you have nothing. That's a win. Celebrate that and on and on and on. And so eventually when you start doing those things and you recognize in your brain that worked out, that worked out. Oh, I'm doing that. Okay. So you, that I don't believe it at first becomes I do believe it because I am doing it again. That's strengthening that confidence muscle. I did it. I can do this. I can keep going and boom, eventually. And now we're in, we, we have a home again and you know, that is really important. So that's why I say, even if you don't believe it at first, yeah, lie to yourself. Go ahead. Tell yourself the good thing. You can do it even if you don't believe it at first. And then celebrate everything along the way. And you will prove to yourself that you can do it and why it is important. And you can believe in yourself. And then what else can you do? Yeah, Cindy, resilience. What else can you do? You know, I am in no way saying I'm unstoppable, but I feel that way sometimes when I realize when I look back. And I look at this five inch binder I have over here that I took to mediation, you know, and I know I did that. I did that. Wow. Like I've never done anything like that before. I've never been in that situation before. And now I'm on the other side of it and I can look back and know I did it. Yeah. And I believe everybody has the ability to meet any challenge that comes to them. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. you know, I applaud what you're able to do because when you start believing people start believing in your belief in you and then they start saying it, yep. right? And now you've got everybody on the right page versus a pity party, you know, where everybody's feeling bad for you, sympathetic, and now they're feeling bad leaving you and now you feel bad that now they feel bad and bad just continues to multiply. To your question, Cindy, yeah, my wife does uh, gentle yoga, mostly older women, maybe a, you know, a husband or two, uh, in there, but, uh, and she still charges $10 for the last 30 years. So she's not, a, and, and she takes all the money, <laughs> ends up making soup and cakes for all the older ladies who, uh, uh, you know, you know who, who aren't feeling a hundred percent. So yeah, you know, when you do some things, uh, to help people, you do it out of, of love and, and, and uh, you know, compassion, uh, most, you know, what, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And that's yeah. just the way it works. It's who you're with when it happens, how you deal with it when it happens, because everybody's looking to you for their clue. You know, what is it? How do you feel? What do you think? You know, it's the first questions you get after something happens. Yeah. And, you know, there's a balance between, being available for help, being open to it, or being a burden. 
and overwhelming people with a need that you can't satisfy, let alone them yes. with you. Uh, and every day is a new day. You know, the funny thing I tell people, because so people get so upset in the moment or in the day, is I say, tell me a year ago to this day what you were worried about. You yep. can't tell me. You might tell me one in November something happened. Yep. But remember that if you don't remember a year ago what happened, a year from now you won't remember this. And yep. the other thing is, you know, what it's called is just the way it is. And, you know, it is what it is, and it's whatever then you want to add to it for as long as you want to carry it. Right? If a glass breaks, you could think it's the worst thing in the world and think about blah, blah, blah. Or you could say, you know, no big deal, you know, and not, not that it isn't in a way, but to what Gretchen just said, once you say that, anything out loud all of a sudden has meaning. Yep. Once it's expressed, it can't be brought back in, right? You can't put it back in the bottle. So what I tell everybody is if you have enough gratitude, and it's an exercise, you got to work at happiness. It's much easier to be sad. There's so many ways to get there, you know, uh, is you got to practice it. You know, when I wake up, I, I wake up, I spend a few minutes just thinking, you know, remembering all the blessings, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and when I go to sleep, I think of all the wonderful things that I was able to enjoy. Yeah. Right. And if you start with gratitude and you end with gratitude, yeah. You're always on the hunt for what am I going to bless tonight and be yeah. thankful for. And that's enough, you know, yeah. when, and that's going back to people's fears. They're usually based on supplying needs that aren't as important as what the cost of providing them. You know, during the pandemic, I know so many people who stayed home and found out it was more cost efficient, not to work. Yeah. You know, when you factor in daycare and cleaning and gas and cars and clothes, clothes. Yep. you know, the whole deal. And now you're netting like 150 and then someone's taking care of kids that aren't as interested as you are. You're, you know, you're, you're doing things that aren't naturally you. And then all you got to do is figure out how do I make 150 a week at home? Yeah. Right. Or whatever the differential. Or maybe I decide to take the next step. And look at what am I spending money on that's making me have to do this. And eventually you minimize to the point where now you can get the lifestyle, both in career and personal, that you could never afford the other way. And I think it's yeah. just 40s. What do you think, Gretchen? I know we're coming on the end of our hour. Yeah. It's been an exciting time. It's been a learning thing. I'll, I'll remember this longer. I probably would have even on some of the records. But I, I think, you know, celebrate this one because, you know, it, it still is streaming on two channels. LinkedIn will figure itself out, hopefully, to maybe do a test later. But I I applaud you. I'm celebrating the fact that this to me is, is a win. You know, you can't do anything about LinkedIn's ability to, you know, maintain their platform. But you did still provide value and this is recorded so you, people can still get the benefit of the wisdom that you've shared by listening to it, even if they didn't couldn't make the live. You know, a lot of people listen to him on the replay. And that also is, is really telling. Like I've seen people say I couldn't get the live, but I love the replay. So I, I think that's that's definitely worth celebrating. And for, you know, Mike and Cindy, I'm just so glad that, you know, they yeah. were able to join because their input was so great too. And I've never heard of gentle yoga and now I know about it and I may have to check it out because <laughs> I'm, you know, well, I'm an older like, adult. So yeah. <laughs> no, she's a great, great, great person, a great teacher. And, and people come for her more than what she even teaches. Which, that which is, is That's important. That actually, I, I don't want to let that go. And I didn't mean to interrupt you, but there's a, there's a, a performance coach. She does physical per peak performance. And she was telling me, like, she was like, well, I don't know if, you know, if I'm a good coach and people aren't coming to, you know, there aren't enough. And I was like, okay, how many people come to one of your classes? Ah, eh, like 12 to 15. Why do they tell you that they're coming? Do they, do you ever talk about them? Oh yeah. They love the vibe and the energy and all that. I'm like, well, okay. So Catherine, you do that, that they're coming to see you just like your wife. 
So anybody else, like you, people interact with you because of you. And I think that's so important. Just bring you to the table, you know? So yeah. And Mike, I'm, I'm going to, um, I want to see yours when you do yours. So I'm excited for that. And <laughs> let's, let's hope it's better uh, that uh, LinkedIn is better as far as being able to integrate. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, you, know, Gretchen, you know, what I find about doing LinkedIn lives, especially with you, not only is it a co-hosting opportunity, it's a co-coaching opportunity. Yeah. Right. So well, it was just me and you, we share enough and play enough back and forth that it really does reset things, put things in the proper perspective. And yeah. when you start with a win and you can add to it, then that's where the win, win, win start to show up. Absolutely. And, you know, I think there's something to empathy. There's something to identifying, you know, it's not just a message. It's also the picture that people get. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think that's so valuable. And, you can never get too strong for yourself. You know, yeah. you can never be more uh, oh, uh, supportive of yourself. But, you know, when I did just an enclosure, when I used to do a lot of turnarounds and I had some tough roles, I mean, I had to go in and maybe slice two thirds of the workforce in a very short period of time and only cut, don't cut into the muscle, right? And, and trim as much as you can. As I heard every story and it made, it just broke my heart every night mm -hmm. to hear how people were one week away from the street or, you know, just bought something and now blah, blah, yeah. blah. And I felt for them, but I, first of all, I didn't take, I didn't own it as much as the people who created it before I got there. But what I thought to myself, why are a third on the lifeboat and you guys didn't make it? Right. And it's like, well, did anybody want to take some more classes? Did anybody volunteer for things? Did anybody stay later or, or work harder? Right. And so, you know, in a way, it didn't justify the bad feelings, but it did show that expect that if you're, you know, put it this way in today's world, no matter who you're working, whoever signs a check, you're still working for yourself. Yeah. And, and if you're not building a, a, a life raft, while you're on the boat uh, and give you a head start. And the other thing I learned because I've always been an entrepreneur is get multiple streams of income. Don't, don't depend on anything. Oh yeah, for sure. Always to be there. It's not like 40 years ago where IBM promised you stuff. So anyways, thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Mike. Anybody wants to learn more about my wife's yoga class, I'll be happy to uh, connect them. Uh, and with that, look forward to tomorrow's. I'll tell you to, right now who's on tomorrow is Kelly. So, oh, yay. Yeah, Kelly's going to be, actually, I'll tell you, Kelly's tomorrow. Uh, Carla is on Wednesday. Yay. <laughs> uh, Stuart Huckett from England is on Thursday. Mike's on Friday. Yay. No one yet on Saturday. And uh, Sarah's back next Sunday. Nice. So, oh, yeah. She loved it and uh, was so, so uh, surprised in a pleasant way. Yeah. That she can just settle into a culture and environment that's so aligned and inviting for what she's into. Yeah. You know, everybody needs a, a happy home. You know, yeah, I agree. <laughs> hopefully this could be one of them. And, you know, the thing I, I felt worse about when I left my business was after 37 years, it was a family. Yeah. You know, there are people there for 20, 25 years that you live through their life experiences and you help yep. support them. And then you're another guy on the beach or the golf course. <laughs> and it's just not, that's why I got back into LinkedIn. You know, yeah. when you love what you do and you do what you love, why would you retire from from it and what are you retiring to it and whether you retire at, a, at an age where you're putting your time or you just decide to early retire for things that aren't working and rehire yourself yeah. give yourself a better offer than your boss right <laughs> in your own dream so anyways with that i want to thank everybody i'm going to end the stream that i don't even know it was only 
50% of the stream today. Uh, but we'll catch it tomorrow, and I'll try to do some research so I understand this better. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Cindy. And uh, thank you, Gretchen. And look forward to talking with you.